the screencast uh, pertains to Module 2, Lesson 9, where we have a whole bunch of word problems. I'm going to do one word problem from the practice set out to illustrate a uh, multi-step problem, and we'll see that there is another problem in your homework that's very similar, so you can refer back to it. The other problems I'm not going to do out for you. Uh, some are very simple, so I did not bother putting them in the screencast, and some are a little bit more complex, and I'll give you some pointers to help you through. Okay, this is the one problem from our practice set, and we'll run right through it. It says an office space in New York City measures 48 by 56 feet. If it sells for $565 per square foot, what is the total cost of the office space? make our statement. The total cost of the office space is, and we'll leave a blank, and we know that the unit's going to be dollars. Well, the one thing we do know is one unit of office space, one square foot, is $565. So I'm going to just write one unit equals $565. I have to calculate how many units. Well, when we talk about square feet, we're talking about area. And we find area by multiplying length times width. I'm going to model that here using the area or rectangular model for this portion of the problem. And that's always available to you. Some people find this easier than the standard algorithm. So I'm going to decompose my first factor. 48 becomes 40 plus 8. We'll partition this. And we're going to decompose 56, making 6 plus 50. And we can now multiply out uh, our sections of this. So I am going to multiply uh, 6 times 8. I have 48. And I now have 6 times 40, and that's 240. Remember, we're multiplying 6 1s times 4 10s. So we have 24 10s, which is 240. Moving along to our lower row, I have 50 times 8, that's 5 10 times 8 1s. So that gives me 40 tens, which is 400. And I'm now going to multiply 5 tens, or 50, times 4 tens, or 40. That gives me hundreds as my unit, and I have 20 one hundreds. Now we'll find our partial products. I'm going to add my ones place, where I get 8. I have 4 in the tens place in 48 and 4 in the tens place in 240. So I have a total of 8 in the tens place. And I have 2 in the hundreds place. We'll now find the sum of uh, these two. And that's very simple. 0 ones, 0 tens, 4 hundreds, and 2 thousands. We'll add our partial products to get our area. So I have 8 in the 1's, 8 in the 10's, 6 in the 100's, and 2 in the 1000's. So I have that many units, and I know each unit is $565. I'm going to use a standard algorithm to solve this portion. Now I'm going to put 2688 on the top, because if I use it on the bottom of my standard algorithm, I'll have four partial products, and I would rather work with three. Okay, working along here, we have 5 times 8 is 40, regroup my 4. I have 5 times 8 again, which is 40, plus 4 is 44, regroup. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 4 is 34, regroup. And I have 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. Moving right along here, now I'm multiplying from the tens place, so I'm going to put in my zeros. 
6 times 8 is 48. Do my regroup. 6 times 8 is still 48. 48 plus 4 is 52. Do my regroup. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5 is 41. And 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Cross those out. Now I'm going to multiply by 5 in the hundreds place. Well, I've already multiplied by 5 in the ones place, so I can use that information here. I'm going to put in two zeros, and all I have to do is copy the rest of that down here because I know it I know what it's uh, to multiply five ones so it's easy enough to multiply five hundreds. We'll now find the sum of our partial products zero ones twelve tenths regroup. I have two or four plus two plus one is seven hundreds. Three plus one is four plus four is eight thousandths. One plus six plus four is eleven ten thousandths. Regroup. And one plus three plus four, or one plus three plus one is five. And we just have one here. We'll insert our commas here. And we have a rather large sum here. We have one million five hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. We'll put that in. One million Five hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred twenty. All right, that's the problem all worked out for you. You'll find that that's very similar to the problem in uh, that uh, the last problem of your homework. Now we're going to go through some homework problems and try to give you some pointers to help you through. This is from the homework. I'm not going to do it out for you, but I'll I'll give you a little hand with it. Jeffrey bought 203 sticker sheets of stickers. Each sheet has a dozen stickers. We know that a dozen is 12. He gave away 907 stickers to his family and friends on Valentine's Day. How many stickers does Jeffrey have remaining? You can make the statement for the uh, answer. Uh, that's simple enough. But let's look at the problem. I'm actually going to kind of look at a tape diagram just to just to illustrate this one more time. If I looked at that, okay, I would do something like this. And I would continue that. Of course, we're not going to do 203. I just want to kind of point out uh, the distributed property, how we could solve that. And of course, you can use the area model or the standard algorithm. So I have 203 12s, and I can decompose that into 200 12s and 3 12s. We get the idea of what has to be done there uh, using that model. Uh, so we need to find out how many of these... Uh, stickers does he have? The operation is very clear through that diagram. Now we're going to get a number here. I don't know what that number is, but I'm just going to say uh, total stickers because you're going to calculate that. Make another tape diagram. And whatever that number is, we're going to stick it up there. And we know that if we gave away 907, the remainder is right here. So that lays it out for you. You don't have to use the tape diagram. But this model shows you very clearly what needs to be done. I'd recommend using either the rectangular model or the standard algorithm to solve this problem. Here's another one from the homework. I skipped uh, some of the others because they're very, very simple. Uh, One-step problems where a part B builds upon part A. Uh, nothing very complicated. But let's look at this one. We have Mrs. Williams is knitting a blanket for her newborn daughter. The blanket is 2 and 25 hundredths meters long and 1 and 8 tenths meters wide. What is the area of the blanket? Write the unit in centimeters. Well, here's the rub with this one. 
we have our unit in meters here and meters here, but they want the answer in centimeters. Well, one advantage to that is we'll be getting rid of the decimals, but do we remember how to convert between meters and centimeters? We know that one meter equals a hundred centimeters, don't we? So the conversion factor is 10 to the second. And of course, since we're going to have more me centimeters than meters, we're going to have to multiply. So my main message here is to convert these first to centimeters. The advantage of that is you will not have decimals to multiply because we really haven't done a lot of decimal multiplication and that'll make it easier to solve. So we have two steps. We have a conversion from meters to centimeters then we find the area and we know what that means in terms of operations. Alright, on to the next one. For the next several problems we're going to have to deal with this chart where we have the minimum and the maximum length and width uh, for okay, uh, soccer fields. One is FIFA regulation and the other is New York State High School regulations in the arts. What does minimum mean? Minimum means the smallest. So we have the minimum length, the minimum width. Maximum means the greatest, which is the largest minimum width length and minimum width. Let's look at our problem. It says write an expression. So we're going to write an expression going horizontally. All right, and we're going to have to use some, uh, we, we could use some parentheses. We're going to have multiple operations going on here. To find the difference, what operation is difference, between the maximum area and the minimum area. When we see the words area, we know that we are going to be multiplying of the New York State high school soccer field. Then evaluate your expression, which means you're going to solve. Well, let's just lay out some information here from the chart. If I want my maximum length for New York State high schools, I see I have 120. My maximum width, we're going to pair these pieces of information, is 80. And so I'm going to be finding the area. We know what goes on with that operation. We're going to look at the minimum. Minimum length is 100. The minimum width is 55. And again, we have to find the area. Once we find the area, we have to find the difference. Now, how are we going to do this? Think about it carefully. We want one expression. One expression that is written horizontally that's going to cover and use all this information and the necessary operations to evaluate the expression. If you want full credit, I need that expression. Evaluation is only going to give you partial credit. On to another. This one's interesting, and we'll draw a picture to help us with it. We, would any field with a width of 75 yards and an area of 7,500 square yards be within FIFA regulation? Well, let's look at the FIFA regulations. Uh, we have the width. We need to look at the length. We're looking at FIFA, so we're over here. The minimum length and width is 110 is the minimum. The maximum is 120. So our value here has to be, for our length, has to be between 110 to 120. Now, we don't know the length, but we know the width. So I'm going to just draw a picture here to maybe show you what's going on. We know that this area is 7,500. We know that this is 75. It should be easy to find out what this is, the length. Once we find the length, we need to see if it falls within this range. On to the next this one is an awful lot like the first problem, and this is the one I was referring to. It says it costs $26 to fertilize, water, mow, and maintain each square yard. So we know that uh, one 
unit is twenty-six dollars. Of a full-size field with the maximum dimensions before each game, how much will it cost to prepare the field for next week's match? Well, what do you have to do? We have to find the maximum area. So we're going to have to look at the value for the uh, maximum length. And again, we're talking about FIFA and the maximum width. And what do we do? Since it's area, we should know that it's time to multiply. When we multiply, we'll be given the number of units. We know what to do with that if we look refer back to problem one at the beginning here.